we can survive everything except the extinction of the chicken. Relative to this group, I feel very normal. I'm a very curious person. We have a tradition of always explore the other islands. We might be listening. I don't think there are any global leaders today. I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, today I think about the crowbar issue. The kind of discussion that doesn't come to an end. It has to be interrupted at some time. To look at each other's perspectives, listen, and then build up a different kind of story. So I think it's a transition from an old kind of story to a new kind of story. I've never considered myself as a global citizen. We're trying to figure out what we mean by culture at the international level. And we agree to disagree. And that's part of the fun. To me, religion is part of culture. To, to think, to try to explore what is the, the place of religion in, in culture is, I, I find it difficult to part uh, to some participants. It's an issue. For Chinese, you know, first of all, you have a very close connection with the world. You cannot uh, separate yourself from the world. Uh, especially after Chinese economy you know, grew larger and larger. When we think about uh, the catastrophe which happened in the Philippines, um, it's not possible for the, f uh, the, the government in the Philippines to react by itself, right? So it requires global cooperation. And when I um, heard about the, the workshop, it was, um, it was very interesting for me because it's exactly the subject that I'm working on. It's the, the cultural diversity and how it can be um, accommodated in global cooperation. My major observation so far is that um, first and foremost, I really am impressed with um, the understanding and the positions that my fellow participants uh, have on the concept of culture. So in that sense, I'm learning quite a lot. Um, and I believe that there's a level where we all are bringing in something. And I don't think there's one person who has the whole package ready. The opportunity to, to participate in this, this workshop helped me to understand how the other cultures deal with the, the, the issue of, of survival and sustainability of that. Way of ways of, of living, yeah. At a time when the world is talking about climate change, environmental disasters, literally Zambia is a country in Africa, you don't see us paying attention, serious attention to these issues because we're busy trying to put food on the table. I have my own way of thinking, uh, uh, way, uh, my own way of conceptualizing the global issues. But at the same time, I was um, uh, expecting to, to hear different views, different point of views about the same issues. Uh, but I didn't know that that would be they would be that difficulty, because even though it's a it's a small group in, in a international standard, uh, but with very very different views. There's an issue about religions that came up this morning uh, and the question is how, to, how do you see uh, re uh, religions in culture and uh, trying to understand what is the place of religions in culture. Uh, I find it's difficult to understand that. Each one brings to his table a different kind of story, a different style of storytelling a different history, a different mythology. So Suriname is not like India. China is not like Zambia. But the fact that four of them can tell stories and look for common frames and look beyond current common frames, I think makes it interesting. Even if it is an interesting failure, it's worth it. We know that we, 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 we kind of fit in with each other. But we realize it's very strange to, to listen to people use the same words and not quite realize what they mean. That was a, a big eye-opener. We all have that same experience.
it's behind the behind the words, behind the facade. We are getting to the, the core of it. This is just an ongoing process. So, uh, of course, I get some inputs, and I need to think about them. Um, when the workshop is over, I need to spend some time and. Um, but right now I can definitely say that there are some certain issues which I discussed during the workshop which will, um, which will be processed in my own work in the coming months. At the end of this project, what would I expect as an individual? I personally feel that um, I would want to go back home with not a clear understanding of what culture is at global level, but more especially about the prospects and challenges uh, that we should be aware of as we are engaging as Zambia in the global processes, whether they are political, whether they are economic, that are related to culture. In two days now, we, we, we see the differences. What we're trying to do now is to, to, uh, to make sure that we understand the differences. This morning we discussed some uh, local issue, how to solve local issue. I think the Chinese do think, oh, we should ask the local government and the national government to solve the problem, not, you know, uh, go directly to the global level to ask the UN or other global institutes to institution to solve the problem. That's that's totally different, I think. Chinese people uh, seems a little bit we can say more independent, probably. <laughs> I think the, the, the boundary is, is important to uh, defining who we are. We have to keep thinking about how to expand that boundaries uh, beyond what we know. But the most important thing for us, I mean for small islands, is that we have to know where we are, where, where we stand. We don't want, by exploring the other boundaries, we lost uh, our own thinking about who we are. Uh, so so I, I think it's part of the, the, the challenges of thinking beyond one's own boundaries is not to get lost in that. In a group like this, when you're faced with a paradigmatic crisis, politeness won't do, mild concessions won't do. I think you need an honesty of a different kind. And I think that comes with time. And I think what is interesting is this group has the potential to be honest in two ways. To say that what we know now is not enough. And two, the way we live is not enough. And once you have that kind of honesty, then you realize the limits of this kind of discussion. And when you feel, even if you have done enough homework, you feel, hey, why didn't I think of this? Why didn't I look at this country carefully? I mean, Suriname looks small. But Suriname might have solved problems of diversity China might have failed to do. Can Suriname learn from China? It one level looks disproportionate. It's not. We should be looking for, for leaders or for men who are, uh, who are capable of, of listening and understanding differences. Because to be successful outside one's own boundary, which we are all very familiar with. Uh, to go beyond that, we have to have the capability of understanding. And that capability, to me, is based on the ability to listen to the other ways of thinking. But that's a very different way from agreeing, you know. To me, understanding differences does not necessarily mean you agree with the differences. Not everybody has the same position because they don't, either because they, they grew up in, a, in monocultural backgrounds or because their particular mix of identities is different or because the way they shift identities is a little different. Uh, also, um, colonial histories are different. So the way we in Suriname look at identity is different from, for instance, the, our friend from Tonga. So there, there are different viewpoints, but if you then take the table as a little Suriname, 
you realize that you can shift and form alliances and deal with each other in a particular way. Variety makes you stronger. You're like a Swiss army knife. Relative to this group, I feel very normal. They're all very exceptional people. They're all very unique. And actually, I'm curious by all of them. Uh, I, I feel very fortunate uh, to be with this group. Uh, all of them, they're all very, very special people. But no one has taken the trouble to, uh, to ask people of Turkish or Moroccan descent to describe Holland and to see how the country looks through their eyes. That would be fun to do. Globalization and globalism in Brazil is... Uh, globalization is not even discussed. It's not an issue for us as it is for Europe and North America. Right? And I have participated in various other projects in Europe about globalization, which have bothered me because, especially with Britain, in Britain, globalization is seen as, uh, in education, is seen we have to understand the rest of the world, but we don't question what we know. What we know is taken as a parameter for knowledge for the rest of the world, but we have to understand how they are different. But that doesn't mean we question what we know. So the starting point or the general parameter is always the North. And for me in education that's a problem with globalization. You do not need to like people, you need to respect them. You do not need to agree with people, you need to know that they don't need to agree with you either. I am not sure if what, what I have been discussing, presenting, arguing is well accepted by them or not. <laughs> Um, I cannot judge that, but um, I definitely enjoy the conversations, the discussions, and I'm learning uh, many things from them. Uh, as for culture, first of all, you have to con communicate with each other. That's, that's, that's very important. For me, that, so for me, it's helped me to understand how pe other people are you know, thinking, how they understand some uh, key concepts. Uh, uh, I think, uh, if possible, I also like to introduce this, uh, these ideas, or in, even the, the, the working papers, to China, to China, let more Chinese to is to know to know it. That's very important. I think we can help you to disseminate. Yeah, yeah. yeah because we should the, uh, let more people know it. Yeah. You know, not just the focus on. You know, academic circle, you know, it's too small actually. <laughs>